Welcome to Electronline. In this video, we're going to look at the concept of impulse. What is impulse? Well, a good definition for impulse is as follows. It is a force applied to an object for a certain amount of time. For example, when you take a baseball bat and a baseball and you hit the baseball with a baseball bat, when they make contact, there's a force from the baseball bat acting on the baseball for a short amount of time, and that's considered an impulse. An impulse is usually associated with a force that acts on an object for a very small amount of time, like a hammer hitting a nail, a car running into a post, so the force of the post against the car, things like that. They happen quickly. Now, they don't have to happen quickly. They can happen over a long period of time, but typically it's associated with a short contact force doing something to an object. Well, it turns out when you hit an object, you will give that object velocity or you will change the velocity of the object because in one case the baseball is flying in this direction the baseball bat hits it and now it's flying in the opposite direction basically what's happening is you're changing the momentum of the object so an impulse a force acting over a short period of time acting on an object will change the momentum of the object it will change the velocity and after all change the momentum of the object now, how do we calculate the impulse? Well, here we have graphically a concept where you have a mass, an object that has mass, and you're applying a force for a certain amount of time. The impulse, and we use the capital letter I to indicate impulse, is equal to the product of the force times delta T. So the greater the force, the greater the impulse. The longer the force acts on the object, the greater the impulse. So imagine a baseball bat hitting a baseball. It first makes contact, it pushes hard and hard and hard against the ball, the ball changes direction, the contact lessens, and then there's no longer contact between the two objects. So you can imagine that over time, from T1 to T2, the contact force increases, 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 reaches a maximum value, then begins to decrease, and then the contact is lost, and the ball is now traveling in the opposite direction. So you can see that during the contact, there's a change in the force, it reaches the maximum, goes back to zero over a certain amount of time. It turns out that the impulse is equal to the product of the force times the time, or we can say it's also equal to the area underneath this curve. Now you say, well, how do I calculate the area underneath the curve like that? Well, using some calculus, we can say that the impulse is equal to the integral of the force, so now of course we would need a function describing this force from T1 to T2. If we could do that, then we can integrate over that time period from T1 to T2 and that would give us the impulse. Another way to think about it is we can figure out what the average force is in the average time of contact. In other words, we can take something that looks like this and make it look a little bit more like this. The average force for this amount of time, now notice I've shortened the time, I made it into a, a rectangle so that the area underneath here equals the area underneath this curve. And so here you can plainly see that if you now want to find the impulse, you simply take the average height over a certain duration like this and you get the impulse. The impulse is the average force times the time elapsed or the average force times T2 minus T1. So that's a more simple way to find the impulse. Either we approximate it by doing it like this, or we try to find the actual equation of the curve and use the integration method to find it. Now notice, you can have a different situation where the force is not nearly as great, but acts over a longer period of time. So in this case, the impulse will look like this. The average force of a large amount of time, and again, the impulse will be the area underneath the curve. Now let's think about it in terms of numbers. Let's say that we have an impulse of 10 kilogram meters per second. Hmm, force times time is kilograms meters per second? Well it is because force is kilograms meters per second squared times seconds, one of the seconds cancel out, so you can see that this would be the units of impulse, which is also the units of momentum, because momentum is mass times velocity, mass in kilograms, velocity in meters per second. So you can see that the units of impulse are the same as the units of momentum. So if you apply an impulse of 10 kilogram meters per second to an object that has a mass of 10 kilograms, you will give it a change in velocity of one meters per second. So 
that will then result in a change in velocity equal to one meter per second because if you multiply one meter per second times 10 kilograms you get 10 kilograms meters per second so if you apply the same momentum to a smaller object one that is only one tenth the size one kilogram instead of 10 kilograms then the change in velocity will be 10 times as large one tenth the mass same amount of impulse 10 times the change in velocity so in this case the change in velocity would be equal to 10 meters per second but in both cases the change in momentum is going to be equal to the change of the impulse which is going to be 10 kilograms meters per second so notice that the change in momentum is always equal to the impulse but the change in the velocity depends upon how large the object was upon which the impulse is applied so we can say here that an equation to describe impulse can be written as the impulse is equal to the force times the time just like we saw before or we can say that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum which is equal to the mass of the object times the change in velocity so 10 kilograms times the change in velocity of one meters per second or one kilogram times the change of 10 meters per second hopefully this gives you a very good idea of what impulse is now let's go do some examples in the next videos to get a better understanding of how impulse is implemented with equations and with situations where we have impulse and momentum together and that's how it's done